Hey guys, my name is Dice Roland. Today we're going to be taking a look at a fan film based from a classic Christmas horror movie. It's Me, Billy was written and directed by Dave McRae and Bruce Dale, and was released in Canada on May 28th of this year. Three young women, including Jess's granddaughter, return to Jess's house to celebrate one last Christmas there. What they don't know is that Billy is there waiting for them. So without further ado, this is my review of It's Me, Billy. <laughs> The movie begins by introducing us to the granddaughter of Jess, Sam, played by Victoria Mero, and her friends Justine, played by Malika Henny Hamadi, and Emma, played by Shelby Handley. They're traveling to Jess's house to spend some time there. When they arrive, we briefly meet the neighbor, played by Carol Coltman, who gives them access to the house before heading off. The girls get settled in, and Sam and Emma have a bit of a discussion about Sam's alcoholic mother and grandmother before dinner. But there seems to be something or someone lurking about. Sam mentions that there's always been something that didn't add up, about how things were resolved involving the events that her grandmother went through. Peter being labeled as the mysterious killer of the other sorority sisters just didn't fit. This is even something that Jess herself said. After dinner, they gather around to watch a horror movie, but it's interrupted by the phone ringing. On the other end is a very familiar, demented sort of voice, provided by Dave McRae himself. Sam believes this is yet another prank caller, who would often plague her grandmother. So, she unplugs the phone, and that seems to do the trick. Later that night, we learn that Billy, played by Brian Charles Peter, is once again lurking in the attic. But he does leave his space to attack and murder Emma and Justine. While Sam wasn't woken up by the sounds of her friends being killed, she is woken up by a knocking at the front door. Naturally, no one is there. No time to think about that, though, as the phone rings again. Searching for the phone that was in use just a moment ago, Sam is lured upstairs into the attic. Here she discovers Justine's body and meets Billy. Fleeing the house, Sam finds help in the form of the neighbor lady from before. My brother and I live just up the road. I don't like where this is going. Here, please, call me Agnes. <laughs> Sam! Abort, abort, abort! So, Agnes chloroforms Sam and takes her back to the house where Billy locks her up in the basement. But there's something or someone else in there with her. And with that cliffhanger slash twist to the credits roll, I found the plot of the film to be pretty interesting. I'm kind of glad that it didn't take place in the same house as in the original Black Christmas, but in a place that bears some resemblance to it. On paper, it seems like a very simple premise, but on screen, it was much bigger than I anticipated. I also am quite glad that the story doesn't try to reveal or explain everything, especially about Billy. As far as characters in slasher horror movies go, it can be quite difficult for me to genuinely like some of them. Usually, they're just future victims for the killer, and that's what I'm waiting for. Here, I was actually kind of sad to see Justine and Emma killed, so that's definitely credit to both Shelby Handley and Malika Henny Hamadi for making their characters so likable. I quite like Victoria Mero, and I think she has a striking resemblance to Olivia Hussey. I fully bought that she was Jess's granddaughter. She also did very good acting the part, especially towards the end. I highly doubt anybody could reach the same levels of disturbingly creepy as those who originally portrayed Billy. But Dave McRae and David Charles Peter did their own kind of creepy, and I must say it worked quite well. Again, I'm happy that we never really saw Billy fully. There really wasn't a whole lot of special effects here, at least not in the way that we're used to. What was done seemed practical and fit seamlessly with every other bit of the movie. The settings, primarily the house, were quite nice, and, like I said, gave a certain familiar feel without being exactly the same. The atmosphere was also quite good. Not terribly stand out, but that's not a bad thing. It acted as a solid platform for everything else to be shown through. The music and the general sounds is where I feel like It's Me, Billy really shines. Once again, Dave McRae and everyone involved with these elements did a great job. I noticed the familiar portions right away, and it all avoided falling into a form of stereotypical false jump scares and such. The scene I like most involving music and such is towards the end, where we see Emma with the plastic over her head in Agnes's car, while Carol of the Bells plays. With all that being said, I'm giving It's Me, Billy 7.5 out of 10 bloody thumbs up. This is a lovingly crafted tribute piece to a well-known Christmas horror movie. Just trying to make something that would follow up and continue the story of a movie from the 70s is difficult. 
I was completely invested in this all the way through, and I actually liked the twists. So well done to Dave McRae and all the actors and crew involved, because this is a solid and well-made fan film. I would recommend It's Me, Billy to Black Christmas fans, of course, slasher fans, and anyone who enjoys supporting fan films that feel like they should have a theatrical release. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, give it a like to let me know. Don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me what you think of this film. And if you have any suggestions for horror movies you would like to see me review in the future, you can support the channel through my Patreon where you can get exclusive exclusive content and early access to videos like this. Also don't forget to share this video to help the channel grow and subscribe for more videos like this. See you later.